G'day. Joining me today, we have the Minister for Education, or as I know him, Burmo. And what we're doing, you, you see and read a lot of talk about major policy positions, but I thought today we'd take the chance, and he's very kindly given us some time to see how this actually impacts on the front lines. Burmo, thanks hey, for joining us. Thanks, mate. Pleasure. Mate, we've heard a lot in the last couple of weeks about childcare. It's your policy. What's it mean on the front lines to a family in Reed? Well, what it means to more than 10,000 families in Reed is essentially that the costs of their childcare will go down over time. So families are going to see that the childcare subsidy the government pays to them is going to go up uh, and it will go up quite significantly for low and middle income families. If a family is earning about $80,000 a year and has a kid in childcare for three days a week, they'll be around $2,000 a year wow. better off as a result of these changes. Also, many families find that they hit the $7,500 childcare rebate cap each year. That's really just a cliff. They fall off about this time of the financial year where they completely run out of childcare support. For low and middle income families, that cap's going to be abolished, meaning they no longer have to juggle the number of hours they work with the hours of childcare that's available to them. The hours should match how long it is they choose to work. And mate, you hear a lot, you know, as I go through the electorate, I've got people saying to me a lot, you know, they want to measure things by what's fair. Yep. Okay. Mate, where's the fairness in this? How's, how's it work? Can you explain that to us simply? So we're really focused on making sure the dollars go to the people who need it most. Yep. So we're cutting out childcare subsidies for really high income families. Uh, we're targeting more to give a greater level of subsidy to low income families. But we're also targeting it to the people who are working the longest hours. So there's an activity test in place to make sure that the more you work, the more hours of subsidised childcare you'll be able to get, the less you earn, the greater the level of subsidy. And mate, that's how it really plays out. So what I have families saying to me is, they are forced at some stage to make a mental uh, calculation on where the lower of the two parents' wage sits net after tax, and when childcare exceeds that. And you then see them doing their own sums and saying, it's better for me to drop out of the workforce mm -hmm. and to look after the kids because we're cash flow positive if we do that. Yeah. This obviously changes the game on the it, This is absolutely designed to be a game changer. Yeah. So you know, for a low income family, the top rate of subsidy will increase from about 72 cents in the dollar to 85 cents in the dollar. That means if it's costing $100 a day uh, to have your little one of childcare, Get you'll be able, you're getting 85 bucks back. So it's a $15 cost per day yeah. to be able to go out to work and work the number of days that best suits your family. And hence a lot more incentive for that, for that family impacted to have both people at work earning, uh, paying tax back into society and helping us provide the services we need. Exactly, it empowers families to make the choice that suits them. Yeah. Uh, obviously, families who choose to have one parent stay at home and care for their kids, that's absolutely their choice but this gives them a fair choice where if they need to go back to work, they can without childcare costs being a barrier to doing so. Beautiful. Well, there you have it. You've got to explain very simply. Simon's come up with a policy that's fair, that will enable low and middle income families to uh, stay in work and, and, and do what they want to do, gives flexibility, and, uh, and he's explained brilliantly how it actually impacts the 10,000 families that, uh, that are in REIT. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Burma. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Cheers, mate.